All right, welcome back. So you saw basics, right, what these arrays are in GameMaker. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to show you two quick examples of using an array. Uh, they're pretty simple. should be no problem to get. I've already written the code to save some time. Just want to walk you through it, give you some ideas what you can do in your games. So here's the first thing I'm going to do. Right now I've got it so that when a parent, or sorry, when a monster is left pressed, I call play good sound. And what I want play good sound to do is basically play a good sound from a variety of sounds. So instead of there always being the same single sound plane, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an array of several sounds. They're all good sounds, and it's going to randomly pick one out of that list. So usually you'd probably do something with an if statement, right, if you don't know arrays. So you do like pick a number. If it's one, play this. If it's two, play that. If it's three, play that. Imagine you had 20 sounds and you have to have a whole screen full of if statements. Watch how it's done with arrays and how much shorter the code can be. So first thing I've done is I have an object called global here. And I've made everything global um, just because, make it a little easier to do the code. But you'll see I've made this array. Global good sound zero okay you don't have to make it global if you don't want to but I didn't want to have to fiddle with object names and you know with statements in this example so what I have is I have slot zero has sound boom slot one has sound baby slot two has sound laser a little visual of that something like this zero is storing that one is storing that two is storing that now what we're gonna do is just remember that I have zero one and two as my possible slots when I actually go to the script to play a good sound, notice what I do here. I quickly make two variables, num and how many. How many? Array length 1D, because it's a one-dimensional array, right? It's just one line of values. And global good sounds, I give it the array. It sends me back three, because there's three, you know, is the highest slot, right? We have zero, one, and two, which is three things uh, for the length of this array and then I pick a random number now just like other things we've done in the course if I want to pick the number 0 1 or 2 and I know that how many is the number 3 because the length of this array is a length of 3 then technically I have to pick a random number between 0 and how many minus 1 right that shift of 1 there I don't want to let it pick the number 3 because three is not in my array, all right? And I'll get a problem. So I pick a random number between zero and I know it's two. And then I go to play the sound. Now notice how I use the array here. Nice, clever, simple use. Play the sound, global, good sounds, num. So if num is zero, it's going to play good sounds zero. If num is one, it plays good sounds one. If it's two, good sounds two. And that's it. Okay, nice little random code there. The nice thing is if you add a hundred different positive sounds here, you don't change anything in this code, that code stays the two, three lines there, right? And it works. So you can see here when I click on the monsters, I'll just give this a little test. And as they come out, I'll just click on them. Come on. Okay, there are random luck here is always picking the same one, right? Oh, I know why. There we go. There we go. We finally had different Okay, so it is doing random sounds, right? So it's working. Anyways, so that's that one example of using the arrays, right? Not too bad. Now, the second one I want to do in here is the monsters being produced by the maker. So you'll see here this maker object in the step event is making monsters. Let's show you how I've set that up. So I'm going to go back to my global, just show you the variables involved here. I'm keeping track of the level that the player's on. So what I'm uh, attempting to do here is when they're on level 1, the only monster I want is ghosts. And when they're on level 2, skeletons. And level 3, spiders become possible. So different monsters become possible. You know, I know this isn't for everybody's game, but it's just an example to show you how you can start fiddling with this. Now I'm going to keep track that I'm on level 1. Okay, so as long as we're clear there, our level is level 1. When I go to the maker, whoops, I should show you one more thing. I also have my array of monsters, right? Monsters 0, monsters 1, monsters 2. 
right, with these three things in the slots. Now, when I go to make the monsters with the maker, what I'm going to do here, if I decide, right, to fire a monster out, I'm going to pick my random number, and I'm doing something very similar again. I'm picking a random number between 0 and the level minus 1. So remember, when I'm on level 1, the level is 1, minus 1 is 0, so it will pick a number between 0 and 0. Okay, that's going to guarantee to be 0. And then when it goes to create and make the monster, it's going to make the monster global monsters 0. And global monsters 0 was the ghost, right? Global monsters 0. Now as the level goes up, what's going to end up happening is if I'm on, let's say, level 3, then global level is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. It picks a number from 0 to 2. And then it's going to give me global monsters 0, 1, or 2. So we get different type of monsters out. So it's just to show you this idea, right, how you can play with the variables in here. So when you see this working, I've added a little cheat code. I can hit the L key to up the level. So you'll see here, only ghosts are being made. But when I hit L, which I've already coded before, now it's level 2. It's picking, you know, between the two types of monsters. We should start to see the other types spitting out. So now we have ghost and skeleton. And if I go up to level 3, now it's randomly picking between the three monsters. Now you can do the same thing with DS lists. You know, you could have a different list for every level and randomly pick. But, you know, just showing you. Okay. So that's that example. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you two more things. And these things are going to be, when I hit W, I'm going to be just showing what I did to cycle through my weapons. I'm using an array there. And then this one's a great one that students always ask when they're in tower defense. When I click to upgrade a tower, click. The rate's picking up. The radius picks up. Right? And the tower changes, right? Way better than using if statements. Use arrays for that one. So watch uh, our next video on this and check it out. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you like this video, why not click the like button or even better, subscribe to this channel, share it with a couple friends. That's what keeps us going. Thanks.